but obviously because I'm making two to match the other one's gonna have to have the two by two so these will just be two by twos because such is life okay <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Peach and Page podcast. It is episode 7, I believe, today, and we are on the 7th of December 2019. My name is Jenna. I am the owner and designer of Peach and Page. Uh, I'm coming to you today from a nice, warm and sunny day here in the Adelaide Hills in South Australia, where I live with my husband and my three kids. Uh, it's been three weeks since I last did a podcast, so if you are um, joining me uh, again, um, thank you for coming back. I uh, uh, hope you really enjoy today's podcast. I've got lots of cool things um, to show you that I've been working on for the last few weeks. Uh, or if you are joining for the first time, uh, welcome. Uh, as I said, this is episode seven, so if you do enjoy today's podcast, um, please feel free to watch some of the other episodes um, and you'll get a bit more of a feel of uh, what these podcasts are about. Um, so, yes, I'm Jenna. Um, this is a, a knitting and crochet podcast, sometimes with a little bit of sewing in there, apparently. Um, and uh, yeah. If you do enjoy today, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Um, before I go on as well, uh, where you can find me. So I have my website uh, here, so peachandpage.com, um, where you can buy my patterns as well as yarn pegs. And I also do now have links to all of my other podcasts on that website. Uh, I'm also quite active on social media, so uh, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, where I do post on a daily basis, and also uh, my patterns are available through Etsy. Um, I haven't, don't think I've mentioned it in other podcasts before, but if you do only buy patterns through Ravelry, uh, I do have quite a number of patterns on there as well, if that is your preferred way of purchasing patterns. Uh, so... Uh, as I said before, it's been um, three weeks since the last podcast, so I took a, a hiatus, if you will, uh, of two weeks um, uh, just to uh, recuperate and just spend some time off um, away from the business. Um, as anyone that um, works for themselves would know, um, there is no holidays, there is no weekends um, when you're running your own business. And so uh, sometimes you just need to put on the brakes and go stop uh, and just have a bit of you time and time away from it all. Uh, also, and obviously, the lead up to Christmas, uh, I haven't really been doing a lot of designing, which I've been struggling with a little bit, um, not having that creative outlet. Um, and um, I suppose that instant gratification of finishing patterns and getting things up for you guys to see. Uh, so just working on Christmas knits and things like that has been a little bit tedious. Um, doing a lot of knitting and I miss crochet. For those of you that have watched uh, a lot of my podcasts, you know that I was more of a crocheter, especially with my pattern designing, I tend to crochet. Um, so I am doing more and more knitting and a lot of um, gifts that I'll be giving for Christmas this year are knits. So I'm finding that quite time consuming and I do, I miss just doing a quick crochet project, um, which actually reminds me there was I did do something else this week that I haven't put. I have my little pile here of things that I'm going to show you in today's podcast. Um, and I just realized that I didn't grab that one out. So in a minute, I will pause and grab that before we uh, continue. So I've got a few finished objects to show you today. So some things you would have seen in uh, other podcasts. Um, and then um, a few whips and things like that, uh, depending on how we go for time. Um, those of you that have watched before would know that I've got a little whip that normally sits up here on my shelf um, that is uh, next to me. So if we do get time today, I will um, pull that one out because it's, it's one of those whips that you start working on and then you put it aside and it's just sat up there for months and I haven't done any work on it. Um, and I really, really need to. 
And then, um, so once I've gone through that and some, I've got some new yarn that I want to show you guys that I've picked up over the last couple of weeks and um, then just go through some personal stuff and plans for Peach and Page coming into the new year, which I'm really excited about. Um, some new ventures and some new products that I'm going to be offering as well. So, um, yeah, that's what to today is going to be about. So, um, by all means, grab your um, beverage of choice for today uh, and something you're currently working on and sit back and enjoy the next 45 minutes of me chatting aimlessly and blabbering on to you. I've got iced coffee today um, because it's just a nice summery drink and I'm trying to cut back on my alcohol consumption at the moment um, just because... It just makes you feel like crap. So I am um, drinking iced tea today, which um, I'll show you actually what I've got in case anyone's interested. So that's what I have. So um, I just get that at like the local Coles, 99% um, sugar free sachets because iced coffee normally is so packed full of sugar. So I like to make my own. Um, so I just use one of those in a nice gigantic glass, just enough boiling water to dissolve um, the powder. Uh, I put a bit of sweetener in there as well because obviously iced coffee is generally quite sweet, uh, which is why it's so bad for you when you buy like Farmers Union and stuff. Um, and then top it up with milk. I use almond milk because that's the healthiest milk that I can stand the taste of um, and top it off with ice cubes and it's really, really yummy. Since quitting the booze, my consumption of caffeine has um, dramatically increased, shall we say. Um, it's definitely become my new vice and I will easily go through five, six coffees a day. But, you know, replace one habit with another, hey? Um, so before I start, I'm going to quickly pause the camera because I do want to get this one other whip out um, and then we will get into it won't be a moment okay I'm back um I mentioned before I normally do um those of you who oh, keep the camera um they've watched before would know that I normally do all my filming on a um on a Friday afternoon while my kids are at school and my son is napping um due to just the chaos that is life at the moment um I didn't end up getting uh, a chance to yesterday afternoon but I knew I really wanted to get a podcast out because I didn't it's already been three weeks and this is meant to be a fortnightly podcast it's just really not happening that way um so I really wanted to do one this weekend uh and I put a post up last night on Instagram for those of you that follow me um saying that there will be one on Sunday so I committed to it uh so it is actually Saturday afternoon now um while my son's napping my husband has been kicked out of our lounge room and um, is in our bedroom playing video games and my daughters are told to stay in their lounge room and not come out here unless the house is on fire. Um, so hopefully I won't be interrupted today. Okay, so whips. Uh, no, finished objects. Uh, so the first finished object I got, which is the one that I just grabbed, um, like I said, I've been doing so much Christmas knitting that I desperately just wanted a quick little um, crochet project. Um, I still haven't got any photographs of this yet, um, so you wouldn't have seen them on Instagram. Oh, you may have by the time I post this up tomorrow night because I might put a photo up tonight. But for those of you that are familiar with my bobble bonnets, I did a little Christmas themed one. So um, it looks really red on the camera. It's not quite so insanely bright in real life. Um, so my bobble bonnet is my highest selling pattern to date. Uh, by far, I sell probably at least four or five of these to any other pattern um, that I sell, which is amazing. So. I wanted to do uh, a little Christmas version. So this is just the zero to three month one I think I did. Yeah, zero to three month. Um, in the red is a uh, spotlight uh, marine, superwash merino uh, eight ply that they don't sell anymore. Uh, I just had some left in my, in my stash behind me. Uh, and the white... I don't think it was Melamia. Oh, actually it might have been. It's, it's, it's also just a pure 
um, Superwash 100% uh, Merino. And obviously got my little pom-poms. So yeah, that was my first finished object. So I'm going to get some photos up of that one tonight um, in a suitably Christmas-themed fashion. Um, now that I've got, uh, we've got all our Christmas decorations and stuff ready for when we get our tree on Monday, which I'll talk about more a bit later. Um, so yeah, you might see some photos of that t t uh, well, yesterday by the time you're watching this. Hello in the future. Uh, yeah cute so they're so easy that literally took me like an hour or two to whip up they're so quick um and it, it allowed me to um get my crochet fix in for for the week um put that over there so the next finished item uh is one that you have seen before and i've been carrying on that i need to get it done for ages now uh, and uh, if you follow me on instagram you would have seen this in my stories as well but i finally finished my jack skellington Yo! so um i i had i i'd come to a roadblock with this and i don't know if i'm the only one that does this but if i'm working on a crochet or any project i guess um and something uh, doesn't go to plan or it's not right and you need to frog it and redo it or what have you it turns it gets put in the too hard basket because you're like well um i can't be bothered doing that now um you put it aside and that's what happened with this guy um i'd done most of him bar i had one leg to do and had to do his eyes and his collar um but his hands the pattern um was just uh i don't think i even purchased it it was just a free one online and the pattern for his hands i can't even remember i think they were just i think it was it was a chain and then single crochet back down chain single crochet back down and then you sort of worked the hand a bit but what happened was each of the fingers would like curl up um and so or even curl back it, it looked really weird um so his hands just weren't right and i i just could not get past his hands um and the thought of and because that's what the pattern had done if i wanted to change his hands i had to work it out myself um i tried looking on pinterest and i couldn't find any hands that were um were suitable or would work for the pattern so i'm like god damn it, i'm gonna have to work this out myself so he got put in the too hard basket and for weeks he's been sitting there and mocking me and haunting me um and then um my cousin that i was making this for came over last weekend and i was going to get it done i got it out i'm like i've got to get it finished before he comes so then he can take it home with him that didn't happen um so this week i'm like no i'm doing it so um i got cut out all the felt because that's just um like sheets of felt so i cut out the felt for his eyes um his collar bits and like a little bow tie thing uh finished his other leg and then uh started playing around with the hands so i had an idea that instead of the fingers being a uh, a chain and then single crochet back down the tra chain to instead do a um chainless single crochet foundation stitch that's a mouthful um which i i do i have in a couple of my patterns um i thought i would try that and i would do it with a smaller needle and a thinner yarn so it wasn't so chunky um and hopefully would sort of hold a bit tighter and um it i, I managed to really pull it out my ass it worked um so so it doesn't defocus they're nothing special but they're straight i mean they curve like a bit this way but they're not like eh, fingers like they they sort of work so i was really really happy with them actually the hardest part was getting the old hands out um because i'd sewn through the hand in black yarn and for anyone that's worked with black yarn would be aware that <clears throat> It's very hard to see stitches or anything so trying to get the old hands out without completely unraveling the arms <coughs> <coughs> excuse me 
excuse me, um, it's probably my biggest challenge and then trying to stuff the new hands in. But we got there, he's done, he's finished, um, he's got wire in him, so all his, um, well, I have got him, his legs bent because I had him sitting on a shelf. Um, but you can straighten, straighten his legs out um or position his arms how you like um so yeah i'm pretty pretty stoked that he's all he's all done he's quite cute so that's just it's a relief because that's been doing my freaking head in to get that one done yeah so that's finished object number two Now I've just got to find a time to, so I'm probably not going to catch up with my cousin. Oh, no, I might see him at Christmas. But I'll wait off for Christmas. Save me having to post it. Because he lives like an hour away and I'm not dropping it off. Um, right. Next finished object. So another one that you would have seen on my social media if you followed me. Whoop! Are my cacti? So these are um, a free pattern by uh, Zoe Creates. Um, I'll put uh, the link to the actual blog that these come off of um, down below as well. So these are a free pattern. I picked up these um, little ceramic um, cups from Bunnings uh, for like. $3.50. I was hoping to get some of the little terracotta pots um, that they sell at Kmart for like a dollar each, which are their exact same size, but they sold out. Oh God, keep the camera. Um, they sold it everywhere. Uh, so I think, um, cause a lot of people use them for like gifts for teachers and things like that. Um, so I just could not find them anywhere, but these ones are a little bit more expensive. Um, but I quite like them and it's a free pattern as well so there's four um, designs I haven't done the fourth one yet and they're all free and I'll take one out of the cup to show you so that's what it looks like out of the cup so it, it's it's just a ball and it's stuffed with your usual um, polyfill or whatever you use when you're doing your stuffed crochet stuff um, the brown soil um, was, um, oh, that's what I was meant to do, did I go spotlight? Um, was brown spotlight marble eight ply acrylic. Um, because I didn't mind if the soil was acrylic. Acrylic is obviously a bit more fluffy looking, um, but I thought that would be all right for soil. And then for the actual cacti themselves, I stuck with um, cotton because um, I quite like the stitch definition of cotton um so i was able to pick up a few different shades of green um both from my stash and uh from kmart kmart spotlight so i think though both of these were spotlight greens um and then this was a i think this was actually also a spotlight green but it's a discontinued shade but i had some in my stash just enough to make a couple so they are very cute and since making them I've got my husband and my kids are all hassling me for cacti now. So I'm going to be busy making everybody cacti. Um, they're cute little, um, they just look nice like for desks or for paper, as paperweights. Um, and they whip up so quickly they literally take about an hour each. So and it, like I was saying before gifts for teachers and things like that like that is, it would be a perfect teacher gift um, to put on their desk. Uh, and they could be used as pin cushions too. So um, a good little gift if someone is a sewer or a quilter or something like that because the cacti can work as pin cushions as well, which is another cute way of using them. And they've got a little flower on top, also in cotton. But yeah, really good. Pattern's quite simple. Um, obviously, it's a free pattern on a blog, um, so you do sometimes have to fill in the gap gaps a little bit. But if you're, um, you know, an intermediate crocheter, you wouldn't have any problem working out what you need to do um, for those ones. But yeah, 
So that's another finished object that I have done, which I'll put over here so I don't get them confused. Oh, I wrote tickle in my throat today. I'm trying so hard not to cough, but I need to cough so badly. Ah, mm. oh, that's good, that's good. And I have um, a couple of hose or half finished objects, which I'll show you the first one. So if you've been, again, oh, I should have taken these. These sock blockers are still joined. Um, I think I showed last podcast um, that I had started uh, a cut pair of socks. So I finished one and half finished the other. So I still need to put in the heel for this one because it's an afterthought heel. Um, so a nice wedge toe, afterthought heel and um, and cuff. And obviously the, the look, heel toe and cuff are all contrast yarn um so both of these yarns were a, a sock weight hand dyed 75 25 uh yarn merino and it was by pace baker yarns i think oh i should have looked it up i'll put the link down below um but yeah i picked picked both of these up the nice the purple and um the gray the heel is yeah just a basic afterthought heel it's just a plain vanilla sock um so these socks are size 11 so they are a little bit loose on my sock blocker uh for the cuff i did a twisted one by one rib which is my current favorite rib of choice um which i quite like and i made another sock after this and did a, a two by two rib and i did not like that nearly as much as the twisted one by one rib and it's a, quite easy i've seen a lot of people talk about doing the twisted um the twisted um one by one and i didn't realize how easy it actually was you just go through knit through the back loop instead of the front so um, that's really, really easy. And a nice um, bind off is the Jenny's Super Stretchy Bind Off, which is my new favourite uh, bind off for socks as well. So yes, so that's um, one half nearly finished object that I've been working on. These were really painful um, in that they took forever to do because they're size 11. Um, so it's an 80 stitch sock um, on 2.25 um, circulars. Um, I'm not sure how many stitches long it was, but it was a lot. It was a lot, like 90 or something ridiculous. Uh, so they just they just took forever, but we're nearly there. Um, I just like I said, I've just got to cut in that heel, do all my ends, and that's one gift down. I think I mentioned last podcast I have I was gonna do four pairs of socks. Um, but now my sister's probably coming down for Christmas, so I've increased that to five. Um, because who likes to overcommit? Uh, so I've now got five pairs of socks to do and I've done one and it is now the 7th of December and I'm screwed but we shall prevail and my other half finished object because I've done one and haven't done the second one yet because in case I wanted to be even more screwed let's just do one of every sock so then instead of only half the people getting their socks everyone gets none when I don't get them done in time so this is the next sock I did. This one did not take nearly as long because um, it's a much smaller size uh, in a lovely self-striping yarn by uh, Collar Girl Collective, which I'll put down. I don't know. I've got to find it. I don't know how it's pronounced, if it's Collar Girl or Collar Girl. I don't know. Um, but yes, so I bought uh, her yarn. I grabbed the ball. 
that's it Ooh, wound up so a nice self striping sock uh usual 75.25 um at merino nylon blend and i believe this colorway was called aerial for obvious reasons it's very pretty um it looks a bit more bluey tealy uh, in in my camera um that it is in real life it's a bit more greeny um but yeah and once again play vanilla sock i've sort of i've been now that i've done more and more socks i'm sort of combining my favorite elements of all of them um to sort of find my recipe uh i guess so uh again i've done my wedge toe which i much prefer over the beanie toe which i've shown you in previous podcasts so a basic wedge toe um an afterthought heel which is my favorite heel as well um excuse the ends i haven't put in yet um and a toe up sock with this one as i said i did a um a two by two rib which i don't like nearly as much as um the twisted one by one but that's how you learn what your favorite things are by trying so i tested it it's not awful i just i just prefer prefer the one by one um i find this is a bit looser um i still did the jenny's um super stretchy bind off but yeah it just sort of has a bit of a i don't know a loose sort of flappy hit, um cuff on it um just not quite as nice and tight as the twisted one by one turned out to be but obviously because I'm making two to match, the other one's going to have to have the two by two. So these will just be two by twos because such is life. Okay. Um, I think that is all I had for finished items. So I have actually finished a fair bit of um, bits and pieces over the last three weeks, which is nice. Oh, only problem with dr drinking milk, milk-based drink while podcasting because I'm talking. It makes me all like, all phlegmy. I um, feel it at the back of my throat. It's awful. Too much information. I know. Um, uh, no, we'll do whips. Whips. I only have one other whip to show you. Oh. Uh, two i'll show you the blanket i'll show you the blanket we're doing all right for time i don't have too much left to go through today so it might actually be a bit of a short podcast um so i cast it on another sock because i just do one of every sock instead of doing pairs because who has time to want to do a second sock what I really need to do to counteract that is to learn how to do two at a time socks. That would fix that problem because then I have no choice but to do both of them uh, as opposed to doing one and then the other. I might do that, but I'll need to get more circulars because my circulars aren't long enough for two at a time. But this is the last one that I'm working on. Which is a nice red, shades of red. Um, I'm not doing like a contrast heel toe cuff um, with these ones because the red sort of speaks for itself. Um, I was even thinking the grey would have looked quite nice with it. But no, I'm quite happy with my decision to just do a straight, straight vanilla, all one colour. That's it in the cake. It's, it really is. It's quite stunning. It's really pretty. Um, so this yarn, again, was um, sock weight, the usual 75-25 merino wool, hand-dyed um, by... Who did it? Hedgehog Fibres. It was a Hedgehog Fibre one. Um, so yeah, and I think the colorway for this was called uh, Poison. 
which is lovely. So yeah. Um, and once again, so I'll be sticking with my recipe that I like. So my toe up socks with my wedge toe and my afterthought heel and this time a twisted one by one rib and Judy's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And then I shall hopefully have my ultimate sock with all my preferred elements. So that's another Christmas knit on the way. So that'll be one, two, three. So I've got started on three of my five pairs. I actually, if you've watched previous podcasts, I had a, another sock, which I don't have on me, that had the cable, um, the cables down either side. It was like a white or a light coloured sock. Um, the sock... I wasn't happy with it. Um, that was the one that had the beanie toe on it. Um, I didn't like the beanie toe. I didn't like the heel. The fit was off. Um, I think I mentioned last podcast, my my tension with the knitting is still uh, a work in progress for me. So I discovered with that sock that my tension was way too tight. And when I did um, this one, which is the same needle and the same amount of stitches around, so a 64 stitch foot. Um, this one is way, way bigger. So I it, obviously it was all tension and it was amazing how much difference your tension actually makes. Um, you wouldn't have thought it, but yeah, it's the sock is almost too big. I've gone from too small to too big. Um, so tension is still definitely a work in progress for me but I'm getting better um a lot of the patterns I was reading was having like a 60 or a 64 foot uh 60 or a 64 stitch circumference foot and I've got a small size six foot and my 64 stitch sock barely even fit me so I knew that my tension was way out and I'm like well crap I'm not any pattern I get it's not going to fit uh so I'm it's good to know that I can um quite easily adjust my tension and it, it was once I got into the rhythm of it I, I was able to stop thinking about it and knew that I was keeping that nice loose relaxed tension um so it's nice knowing that I can actually get my sizing correct um, and my gauge correct um, with a little bit of uh, effort. It's not impossible. I'm not going crazy. It was just my tension. Um, so that's one whip, which I was keeping in my bag, which I've shown you before. Um, oh, that's what I'll show you as well. That I'll get to that in a minute. Some of my acquisitions. Uh, okay, so... The blanket um so you would have seen up here i had bundled up a blanket that i was working on so this is a chartered blanket that i started i'm gonna say february or march it was meant to be for my daughter's birthday uh in april this year um so i'm hoping i'll have it for her birthday next year only problem is it's a character blanket and she was obsessed with the show at the time and now she doesn't really watch it but i think she'll still like the blanket it's not like it's baby if it's baby issue or anything it's it's not the show she's like obsessed with anymore so um once i unravel this it's going to be a mess i hope you guys are happy because this is just it's going to take me the rest of the afternoon just to put it back together. Me and my friend had, I think I, actually I think I mentioned it in one of my other podcasts. I used to have it down on the floor and my husband spilt beer on it. Um, and that's why I stopped working on it. He spilt beer on it. It had to be put in the wash. And because it's a chartered blanket with like 20 different separate strands um, being worked simultaneously, um, when that all went through the wash, it was just this matted, not matted, but just this tangled mess of yarn. Um, and me and my friend spent hours sitting on the floor, tangling it all up. Um, well, not tangling it up, untangling it all. Um, 
and putting all the colors onto temporary bobbins made out of toilet rolls um, which has served its purpose great but when you pull the blanket out it just still does tend to just sort of unravel on its own so that was our makeshift bobbins um I probably should look on pinterest because i'm sure people have come up with better ways um <coughs> roll that tickle better ways to bobbin yarn um i'll put the picture up before i show you how much i've done um so up here is the chart so mine is going to be quite large i'll show it's it'd be bigger than a single bed size across the bottom um but yeah so that's the chart and i'm up to where's my arms like where that arrow is that i'm going to put into the picture that i put up there so that's where i'm up to with it so let's see if i can show you this might be a bit tricky oh my god it's going everywhere why did i do this why oh dear god oh oh the regrets my regrets i'll see i might have to just shimmy back a little bit here so eh, hello that's how far up i've gotten you see yeah. i did a baby and it's heavy because it's all it's 12 ply 12 ply acrylic so to get the size i wanted um all single crochet but yeah it was looking cute and then i just stopped uh i stopped for two reasons actually one because of the beer dilemma you should see the yarn down here it's a mess um i'm just gonna chuckle that over there um one because of the beer dilemma and two um the last row i was doing i just could not i kept coming up a stitch short so um if you've worked on graft patterns <laughs> graft patterns before they um there's two parts to these patterns well at least this one that i purchased anyway um they had both the written and the graph so they had um, the graph that they broke down into sections to make it easier to read where it actually shows you the grid and every color per grid and then there was also written instructions so um it would have you know row one and then it would go like six blue one black seven blue three white you know and it would put it out like that um and for some reason i can't i haven't started again i have still haven't worked out where i've gone wrong i haven't revisited it i think i need to frog a couple of rows because no matter how many times i do it the row that i'm up to will not add up but every time i do it i have the exact right amount but i'm sure to stitch at the end um i thought maybe it was the pattern so i added the pattern up and like no because it's a square so you know how many stitches wide it's got to be it definitely adds up to i think it was 200 stitches wide um and i was just doing my head in because i could not work out how i was able to follow this chart exactly and follow the instructions exactly and i know that there's the amount of the right amount of stitches in the instructions yet somehow i'm out in my blanket which makes me think that on a previous row I've accidentally done an extra stitch or done an increase. So I've got 21. So I don't know. I think I'm just going to have to frog because I've frogged this one row like five times and I kept having the same problem no matter how careful I was. Um, so I think I'm going to frog like two or three rows until I get a row that I've triple checked and it's definitely correct and then redo it. Um, but once again, a bit like my Jack Skellington, as soon as there's a problem and I need to work it out or frog it, it gets put in the too hard basket or in this case on top of my too hard cupboard. 
and it just sits there. And because I've done like, what, fifth of the bloody thing? I, I need to revisit it. I need, um, I think what I need to do is have like a schedule. So it's like I need to do a row a day or it's probably a hassle. Because the problem with that, because it's got all the bob, bobbins um, and stuff and so much yarn, when you go to work on it, it's it's not like um, a sock that you can, you know, basically take with you anywhere. You have to have it all set up and all your bob, bobbins laid out so you don't get tangled and it takes you 15 minutes just to get set up. So you don't, and once you're sitting down and then you can't move because you've got everything on you. So it's not a project that you can really do one row on because the time it takes you to set up is not worth it so I don't know if I have to do like one night a week like set aside every Tuesday night or something um I need to do 10 rows or something like that I think I might do that after Christmas once I've done all my Christmas stuff have a have a designated blanket night and then I can at least show you guys the progress um, and keep you guys updated as I complete that mammoth project. I was hoping to have my um, my knitted top um, that you've seen uh, previously, this one up here, um, done by today. But I wasn't counting on taking sort of two weeks off of um, break from everything. Um, so that didn't end up getting worked on. And I also realised just how much Christmas knits I've got to do. So that's literally all I'm doing now is Christmas knits. And I'm going to be making them some bags as well. I showed you the fabric last podcast that I was getting, um, which actually leads me to my next thing. So I um, that's it for whips. So I have also acquired a few other things so other than the yarn um that i've already shown you for those socks uh so i um i showed you last week um i was going to be making some bags for um my kids for christmas uh similar to my these ones um so my eldest daughter i picked out a bunch of fabric brought it home and my eldest daughter's um bags for that one and so she 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 really wants that one um and so um my best friend um saw it and she found this at the post office for five dollars can't go wrong and you know how obsessed i am with pins at the moment um but yeah it's like the exact same pattern so not only is she going to get a bag, but she's going to get a little pin on it as well. Like what I do with mine, put my little pins on. So she's going to have a pin, which was really cute. So I was pretty stoked with that. It's lovely. And it will match perfectly. So that was one of my bits and bobs that I've got. Um, you saw my... Um, my sock blockers that I picked up as well, um, which I was in desperate need of. They were large wire sock blockers. Um, and I also ordered some wooden ones. There's still a bit of paper stuck on it. I think they they put paper on it when the varnish wasn't quite set yet. Um, I got these off of Etsy. I'll, um, I'll put the link down below in my show notes. I think I just need a bit of orange oil, but I don't want to take the varnish off, but I need something to get the bits of paper off of it that are stuck on there. But yeah, so I've got some wooden sock blockers as well now, which are quite nice. So they fit this size. So these are five, size five to seven, which is me, I'm a size six. Um, so I wanted some sock blockers so then I can not only block socks for obvious reasons, but they're good obviously for photos and um, being able to show socks without them being flat. I can get this one on. Boop, 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 boop. 
boop, boop. There we go. So, yes. So, yeah, even this one's a little bit loose. Really got to get my tension right. Oh, yeah. So, I got those this week as well. What else have I picked up in my travels? Oh, got these little scissors from Spotlight. The scissors themselves are actually really shit. Um, <laughs> they work, but they're nowhere near as sharp as I was hoping. So they are really mainly just decorative. But they're, they're nice small little snips that you can chuck in your bag. But most importantly, they're like rainbow. Um, so yes, they're quite pretty. So you'll probably see them popping up in my pictures a little bit. Um, I do use them, but yeah, they're not... They're not the sharpest scissors you'll ever come across, but they do the job as long as you're, you're careful with it and you get the yarn right down the bottom. It cuts clean, otherwise it sort of tears it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and lastly, I have one more yarn acquisition. So I went to, um, for the first time, because all my hand dyed yarn previously I've got from markets and things. Um, so I finally got over to Port Adelaide, which is about an hour's drive from where I live, um, to check out a uh, shop yarn trader that sell all this hand dyed yarn. Um, and that's where I got like my poison um, skein and my self striping skein. Um, and I also got this as well um, from Hedgehog Fibres. So the colorway is called Monet and I just, I mean, it speaks for itself. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Um, it's got that blue base with just little speckles of mostly pink. It has got some browns in there too, um, but mostly just blue and pink. This is a DK weight, so it's not sock. So I won't be making socks out of it. Um, but it's not enough for, you know, any large garment, but whether I'll be able to make a cowl or something out of it, I don't know. I saw it, I liked it, I wanted it, I bought it. So yeah, 100% merino wool, machine washable, 200 metres, Monet. Very, very pretty. So, yeah, I will be sure to um, let you guys see how that colourway looks when it actually gets um, gets knitted or crocheted up. I might even crochet with this one. I do like crocheting hand dyes, and I think this one would actually look quite nice um, crocheted. I just don't know what I'm going to make yet. Don't I? Don't I? Just saw it. Had to have it. So I did. So I think that's about it for everything I've bought, made, working on for the time being. Um, so as far as uh, shop goes, so obviously um, with Christmas uh, and everything coming up, uh, I'm just going to be doing all, trying to get all my bloody socks and bags and things like that finished. So it's not what I'm going to be working on any more patterns um, for the time being. But so keen to throw myself in feet first as soon as Christmas is over. I cannot wait to start pattern making again. I've got designs there ready. I just need to work out the actual pattern, like type it all up, take the photos, things like that. So like my leg warmers, my, um, my cabled bonnet, uh, all sorts of bits and pieces that I've mm. got on my to make list. Oh, um, so that will be um, the plan in the new year. So until then, um, just working on my knit, knit, knits, I will be, um, what was I going to say? That's a complete mental mind blank. I was going to say something and I forgot what it was. Don't know. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm back. 
Um, <laughs> I um, I th- I'm hoping to get one more podcast in. So, um, podcasting today. We'll podcast probably again in a fortnight, um, which will take us to just before Christmas. So I can let you know if I manage to get all my knits done on time. Um, yeah, because that'll be the twenty first ish. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know how I've gone with everything and just a final send off until Christmas. Um, then obviously it's all pretty hectic and I will probably not see you again then until early in the new year. Um, when I will be starting to work on, um, some actual patterns and things like that. Um, in the new year as well, um, I am looking to do some more, uh, made items that I'll be selling in my shop um won't be made to order crochet items but I am looking at um potentially selling some of um my bags so where'd I put it where's my little oh there um so um my little bags this one is amazing I take this one everywhere um with my little pockets so I am potentially looking at selling some of these in um, the shop or similar. Um, I'm also looking at stitch markers. Um, my husband does a lot of work with polymer clay. Um, so I'm looking at, and I used to make polymer clay jewelry and stuff as well um, back in my twenties. Oh my God, did you hear that? That was my stomach. I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> I, um, uh, so yeah, I'm looking at making some polymer clay um, charms or, or stitch markers um that i'll be selling uh as well so a few extra little bits and pieces that i want to um be looking at expanding on in um the new year so watch this space my friends um i think that's about it for um all knitting stuff um so if you have no interest in just general about me bits and pieces um feel free to um finish finish watching now thank you so much for um joining me again today and uh, again if you um enjoyed the podcast please do like and subscribe hit the button down below and uh, feel free to leave a comment let me know what you thought um or how you're going with your christmas knits uh, or christmas crochet makes um and uh, anything else that you want to see in future podcasts by all means please let me know um for those of you who are still listening so as i said today is the 7th of december so christmas is creeping up very quickly um we had the mount barker christmas pageant this morning uh, which was lovely so my middle child so my youngest daughter um she was involved in that with the school so she was dressed up as a fairy and got to walk down the road all in her garb and um so that was fun um we've got our christmas tree getting delivered on monday uh so i bought all the decorations for that um i have an armchair that sits next to me that you can see there um so christmas tree is going to be going right here next to me and that armchair is going to be getting moved out so um my next podcast you should be able to even see my tree so that's going to make everything feel a lot more festive uh we're getting a real tree this year i can't remember if i mentioned it previously i'm pretty sure i did um a real tree for the first time so that's something a little bit different that i haven't done before um either so that should be nice I mean, having a real tree for a change, hopefully I don't kill it prematurely. I have known nothing about looking after trees. I'm going to have to Google that. Um, what else is going on? School finishes this week, so the kids are on holidays. Um, I am not. Not for another couple of weeks. I've got some time off between Christmas and New Year's, but that's about it. Um, I'm um, So, yeah, the kids will be around the place the next couple of weeks but they're in vacation care a lot of the days um because obviously i'm working so but that's good they get to go to the movies and you know ice skating and swimming and whatever else they do they do all sorts of cool stuff so um they're looking forward to that um that's about it to be honest i've done a lot of our christmas shopping already um it's 
yeah, it's really just getting all my makes done, to be honest. That's going to be the the challenge for the next little while. Um, weather's starting to warm up down here in Adelaide. We've had a really slow start to the summer. Um, we are having a lot of issues with bushfires at the moment over in New South Wales. Luckily, no, not so much here in South Australia, but the whole east coast of Australia is effectively a blaze at the moment, um, which is quite sad to watch unfold uh, especially as christmas comes closer so my thoughts are certainly with those living out there that are um being uh affected um by said bushfires um but hopefully they oh, i don't think they they don't they don't even think they're going to get them under control it's literally just a case of waiting for them to run out of things to burn um and slowly just die off on their own i think is the plan at this stage um it can only go for so much longer i guess um what else is going on i think that's about it yeah i think that's about it that's my weekend sorted I'm hoping to enjoy the rest of my weekend. I've done my shopping, done my cleaning, done my washing. And I just get to sit down, watch all the um, vlogmists posts that are going on at the moment. Um, so for those of you that do actively watch podcasts um, or craft casts similar to this, um, you may find that your podcaster is doing vlogmas this year, um, which effectively is a mini 10, 15, 20 minute um, blog every day of December um, a lot less formal um, but just sort of snippets of what they do during the day and in their lead up to Christmas and work and more like day-to-day -day stuff doing your washing and things like that um, sort of a bit more of a personal type thing and obviously opening any advents that they've got I haven't done any crafty advents this year um, as it's something that I wasn't overly familiar with um, nor vlogmas uh, I I'm thinking that maybe next year I might do Vlogmas um, if I'm still podcasting, which hopefully I am if you guys are still hanging around watching my day-to-day -day going ons. Um, so I, um, yeah, I'm watching lots of those at the moment. It's really interesting and it's good because um, because it's an everyday thing. So every day my favourite bloggers are putting their, um, their new Vlogmas clips up. So instead of having to wait two weeks for their next podcast, I get a little taste of them every single day. Um, if you are looking for some, um, some new um, podcasts um, that you want to watch, um, I have probably three main ones that are um, my favourites. Um, so I have um, the Quirky Monday podcast. I didn't write these down, so I hope I get these names right. I'll put them down below anyway. Um, the Crafty Monday podcast is one of my favourites. Um, she's really good. She's doing Vlogmas as well at the moment. Um, it's been going for quite a while. She has a lot of spinning as well, um, which is not something that I do, but she does a lot of work with fibre fiber and spinning. Um, but she's going through doing all her advents and stuff at the moment. Um, another one I really like is Honeybee Knits. Um uh, she also does a fair bit of spinning um, and fiber work as well she used to be a dyer though she's um, as of the end of this year is not going to be doing any um, commercial dyeing anymore they're both USA bloggers they're not here in Australia um, and the third one I listen to is uh, crafty chats um, or the corner of craft I think is the um, handle um, so she's um, in England now. She was in, in um, Germany, but she's now back in England. Um, and she's a yarn dyer and makes beaded stitch markers and um, and knits as well. She's lovely. Um, I just like listening to her purely for her accent half the time, to be honest. She's got a very lovely British accent and a very soothing voice. And she drinks lots of tea. Um, so they're probably my main three that I um, watch. Oh, no, I have four. And Nitty Natty is my other one that I really like as well. So she's another one from the, the USA. Um, and she's doing Vlogmas too. So this is one of my main four on rotation that are going on at the moment. Oh, that's what I haven't mentioned yet either. As I do every single podcast, I mention my nails and my hair. Um, so as you can tell, I am now a 
blonde bombshell if you will um i've got no color in my hair at the moment it is platinum blonde um so i dyed it a few weeks ago um allowed my hair colorist to go right down to the roots with the blonde which i don't normally do i used to always keep my roots dark um but let her go down to the roots and i must say i was surprised with how much i loved it um so i think i might be blonde for a while because i actually quite like the blonde on me i might put some baby pink through the ends i don't know i miss color i like color um in my hair but the blonde is really quite pretty it's starting to go a little bit brassy it was it was really like white um when i first got it done um it's a little bit brassy. I need to put some purple shampoo through it. Um, and my nails, which I've lost two. Um, but I've got some nice um, purple and green metallic claws at the moment. So I think they're due to be done next Sunday, I'm guessing. I mean, next Saturday. I mean, I've got one more week wait on them. Um, so I'm just going to have to put up with the couple that have met their demise early. So yes, I think that's about it. Um, I've well and truly filled up my hour, so I'm going to shut up now and let you guys get back to whatever it was you were doing. Um, good luck with all your um, Christmas knits. May the force be with you uh, as you smash through those. And I will hopefully see you in two weeks if everything goes to plan um, with an update of everything and my last um, blog vlog podcast what do you want to call it for the year uh so thank you for watching please do again like and subscribe so i know that people are watching and let me know if there's anything you want to see and i will see you all again in two weeks bye